In this video, we're going to be looking at trigonometric functions in problem solving. So if these are problem solving, so worded questions, typically what you will be asked for in the exam, unless you just have a, a graphing question or solving for solutions, are these problem solving have trigonometric functions to um, typically model something. So it could have modeled the population, such so it could be going up and down, so cyclical, or it could have lots of other reasons, even if you're restricted to main, then you can get other different shapes. So I'm going to go through some of the so, some key concepts and typical questions they do use. However, the best way to practice problem solving, um, especially sort of the worded questions, is to do practice. And the more you do, the more familiar you'll become with the style of questions, as well as the typical questions they could ask. So to begin with, they could ask like a find the question, equation type of question. So that's when they said, say that the it's modeled by an equation such as this. So y equals a sine bx minus c plus t, but you don't know what a, b, c, and d are. So to solve these, you sub in all points. So all the points that you know and all the information that you know can be useful and you can create different equations. And depending on how many variables there are, once you work out, let's say, two of them, you could then create two simultaneous equations to work out the other two. Or you could put them in your calculator if you have four equations and you can get the four variables. So look at the information they give you and then you can sub in the points. If you also know the period, then you can work out the dilation from the y-axis. So if you know the period is 2 pi, then you know in this example that b would equal 1 because there hasn't been any dilation. But if you know the period was, let's say, pi, then you would know that b would have to equal 2. To get Because like for the 2x, to get that, that would achieve a period of pi. Also, if you know the magnitude, or the amplitude, so the same thing, so magnitude or amplitude, then you can work out dilation from y-axis, uh, from the x-axis. And so that's the number outside the trigonometric function. So that's that number there. So if you know the magnitude is 1, then a would equal 1. If you knew the magnitude was, let's say, negative 4, therefore a would equal negative 4. So if they have a graph here, then they have it like that, and you know that for some reason they tell you that the distance between that point to the x-axis is 4, then you automatically know what a will equal. We'll, now with max min, they often ask sort of quick question, oh, what is the maximum of this graph or what is the minimum? So if that's the case, then you can solve that normally. However, they may even ask, what's the, diff like the distance between the maximum to the minimum? So let's say we were looking at some a dam. So it had water, so this is like the water level, and this is over time, and it was like a Coles graph graphed it. So it went like that. And then they said, what is the biggest difference between the water? So the maximum, let's say, we can work out is 100 litres, and then the minimum is 50 litres. So the difference between the maximum and the minimum, well, is 100. Well, we get rid of yeah, we'll change that 50 to 40 litres, just to make it a bit easier. So 100 minus 40, a bit clearer. 100 minus 40 would equal 60 litres. So the biggest difference between the maximum and the minimum is 60 litres in the dam. Now, what would the magnitude of this equation be? Well, it has to go through here, and then the magnitude would be from this like sort of base level, and then it goes up to the top, and then it goes down to the bottom. So if it's going from here to the top, so that's 100, and then there's this level x, and it goes all the way down to 40, which is a minimum. So we know that the amplitude, the magnitude, is the same on both the top and the bottom. So therefore, the magnitude would equal 30 litres. And that's because the middle point is going to be 70 litres, and then from the top to the middle is going to be 30, and then from the middle to the bottom is 30. So you know that the magnitude or the amplitude is 30 litres. And that's always the case in the questions, that if you're going from the maximum to the minimum and you want to find the top to the bottom, then it's going to be 2 times the amplitude. 
we make sure you look at the question and see what they're asking because sometimes it could be a bit different. So what about if you have to solve for a specific y value? So that's when you have an equation, so y is equal to, let's say, a sine x b or something like that. Then they say you have to solve for when y is equal to 10. So when y is equal to, oh, and assuming that a is, let's say, 50, so we have like 10 is equal to 50 sine, let's say, 3x. So there's going to be lots of values of x which satisfy this 10. However, often in these questions, they're going to have a domain restriction. And that's really important that you look at this domain restriction because even though you'll have a general solution, if there's a domain restriction, you can only say the x values that are within this domain. So if they said, what are the specific x values when y is equal to 10, but maybe there's no values for x in the domain, then you'll have to say, well, there's no values for x in this domain. So it's really important, and they often use domain restrictions a lot in trigonometric functions, or else a lot of the solutions would all be general solutions, because there'd be infinitely many solutions. There's another type of question, which is the increasing trend question. So that's when you have an equation where it has an increasing trend. What this means is that you have the trigonometric, but then you also have this term here. So this is the main term, the ax, or just x, or something like that. And that means that as you go along the x-axis, this term here effectively push translate, translates it up, but by an increasing amount, so an increasing trend when x gets bigger. So that means the equation is going to look something like this. Let's say we have ax, so this is a line ax. Then we're going to get a sine graph, which looks similar to what you've seen before. However, you can see that it starts to follow this ax line here where this value here is y is equal to ax. And these questions are useful for graphing lots of real life scenarios, such as populations, because populations go up and down, but in the long run, they tep uh, typically tend to increase. So with a question like this, if they ask for a specific y value or a specific solution, so let's say it was a population, so this is population, they ask at what time, so we'll say this value is here, so these are time, does the population reach 1 million? So it's not going to be a general solution like before where there could be so a lot of different times that it could reach 1 million. So if we go, but if we go across here, we can see that there could be more than one solution. Maybe there, there's not, but typically, actually, yeah, most of the time there would, there's going to be more than one solution, maybe two, maybe three, or could even be more. But if it said, what's the first time the population reaches 1 million? You need to look at these three solutions, work out which one is the smallest time, so it would be this one, and then you need to equate that time there. And once again, looking at if there's any time restrictions, and as usual, time has to be greater or equal to zero as a general. Obviously, time can't be negative, so if it, for some reason, goes back up higher again, then you obviously wouldn't count the solutions when the time is negative.